In this series, we have been trying to make a binary adder. So in this video, I will go into the detail, the theory behind binary addition. I recommend that you have a little bit of knowledge about binary numbers, but it is not required for you to follow this video. Binary addition works a lot like normal base 10 addition, and computers compute the sum at a hardware level pretty much the same way that we do, with the only exception that they work with binary numbers instead of base 10 decimal numbers. Because we have done it so many times, we don't really think about what we actually do when we perform addition. But to better understand binary addition, I would first like to review the steps that we take unconsciously when we do the addition. So, in base 10 addition, we have 10 symbols. And when we add two numbers, what we actually do is we start with the, the first number, and then we move the number of steps defined by the second number. So, For example, I wanted to add the numbers 5 plus 3. What I will do is we'll start with 5 on this number line, and then move 1, 2, and 3, and the answer is 8 is expected. So what happens when we have two numbers such that the sum is greater than 9? So let's say I wanted to add 8 and I wanted to add 2 together. What would happen in this case? Now, when we start with 8 and we move two times, we actually run out of numbers here. So we have to cross over to the next line. So the number of times we actually have to cross over from 9 to 0, this thing is actually called uh, the carry amount. So in this case, what we do is we write the number here with a 0. But since we actually cross this number line once, we will have a carry of 1. In this case, since there are no actual digits, we just simply add this to 0 because there is nothing here and the answer is 10. But we can apply the same theory and add numbers like 11 and, for example, uh, 9 in this case. So we start with 9 and we add 1. So we have to cross 1 times. In this case, the answer that we have to write here is 0. But since we crossed over the line once, we will carry it forward. And in this case, the answer would be 20. Now, in the case of base 2, not, this is not decimal, by the way, this is binary. Sorry for the mistake. In this case, what we have to do, it's actually very simple because we have only two numbers. So there are only four possibilities of things that we can add. So if we wanted to add 0 with 0, well, we don't actually have to cross the number line. So we start with 0 and we move 0 times. So the answer is 0. We can add 0 and 1. So we start with 0 and we add 1. So we move one time. The answer in this case would be 1. We can add 1 and 1. So we start with 1 and we move 1 time. But in this case, uh, here of course the answer would be 0. But we, since we have crossed the number line, we have to carry it forward to the next stage, to the digit on the left side, and the answer would be 1, 0. And the final option is actually, of course, 0 and 1, but that is the same as this one. So we can add 0 and 1 together. The answer will, will of course, be 1. So uh, this pretty much... Using these four additions, we can perform any kind of addition by following the simple rules. So let's say we wanted to add, again, the same number 5 and 6, 5 and uh, 3. Let's first write this number in binary. Now, just to review, binary numbers work in the same way as a uh, decimal number, with the only difference that the base is actually different. So... Uh, just a quick review on this side. So let's say we have four digit uh, binary numbers. 0, 1, 1, 0. This position, the first one, has the value of 1. The second one has the value of 2, since uh, the base is actually 2. And the next time, this number has the value of this, but again multiplied by 2, since the base is 2. So we have 4 and 8. Now, remember, this is actually very similar to the uh, decimal system where we have the first one number has the value 1, the second has 10. Since this is actually, uh, we have 10 symbols in the decimal system, so this value would have 10. And then this one would be the value of this number, but again multiplied by 10 times, which is again the base of the system. So in this case, this means 
110 if the system was actually uh, decimal. In this case, it means uh, 6 because this has value 1, but there we don't have any of them. This has 2, this, is a, this has 2, this is 4, nothing, no 8. So 4 plus 2, we have uh, 6 in this case. So for 5, similarly, uh, this is the binary equivalent. And you can check by using the same method. And 3 is this one. Now, if you want to add them together, let's try to do that. So we will do it uh, one digit at a time. Adding 1 and 1, we know that uh, basically we have to cross the number. So we start with 1 and we have to cross the number line one time. So the answer is 1, 0. And we carry forward the 1. Now, in this case, we have uh, three numbers that we have to add. So what we can do is we first we can add these two numbers and then we can add these two numbers again. So first adding one and zero, we start with zero on the number line and we move one amount. So we have the number one zero. So we carry it forward and we have the number zero here because we already have carried it. Now, if you want to add zero and one, so we are at zero and we want to add one, the answer would be one here. Here we have one and one. So we start with one, we move one time. The answer is one zero, we carry it forward. And now this one and one becomes zero. And we add zero with zero, this is zero. And now we have one remaining here. So in this case, well, in this case, actually, I think I made a mistake. Here it was zero, supposed to be zero because one and one is one zero. So anyways, now the answer here is eight, as you can see. Uh, is supposed to be it. So that's how you perform binary addition. The reason I wanted to explain you this is essentially what is happening is we are repeating a number of steps, but fundamentally what we have is we have a system. We have, uh, yeah, we have a system basically, which takes two inputs. So we takes the number A, it takes the number B, and it outputs two numbers, sum, which is the thing that we write here. And it also writes if there is a carry or not. Actually, it also, uh, there are not only two numbers when we do that. There's also another number that you might have already noticed, which is a carry in. So for example, when we perform this calculation, we had these two numbers, but we also had to consider the carry that came from the previous number. If we can have a system if we can have a block that performs uh, this calculation for us we can repeat these blocks multiple times and get our uh, have basically n digit addition using just the same block and repeating it multiple times so uh, we, let's try to make something and we will try to perform this uh, sum that we did but using this block. So let's have this block. So it takes the carry in from the, from the previous case. For the first digit, of course, since this actually block represents the first digit, we have zero carry because, of course, for the first digit, there is no carry. There's nothing else that there is nothing on the right uh, side of it. So there is the carry is zero. But we have, of course, the number A and we have the number B. This is the input. Then we have the output, the sum. And then we have the carry, which will move forward. And similarly, let's do it four times. And we have the sum here, sum here, sum here, and the carry. We take two numbers for each cell. So we have A and B, we have A and B, we have A and B. So now, if you wanted to add the numbers 5 and 3, as you know that, as now we have learned that the binary representation of 5 is 0, 1, 0, 1, and for 3, we have 0, 0, 1, 1. We can add these numbers here. So let's say 5 is the number A and 3 is the number B. Let's put these in the correct positions. So for A, actually, I made, I sort of switched it. 
but let's ignore that. So uh, in this case for A, let's put that here. So we have 0, 1, 0, 1. And for B, we have 0, 0, 1, and 1. Now, we already know what the output of this number should look like. So adding A and B together, we know that the sum in this specific case will be uh, 0, but we will have a single carry. So the carry will be here. In this case, we have 0 and 1 that we want to add together. So we have 1, but then we also want to add 1 again. So the sum in this case would be 0, but there will be a carry that will move to the next stage. So we already know what happens here. This, this is pretty much the same as here, only reversed. So the answer would be, again, 0 here and a carry forward. And here we have 0, 0, and 1. So the sum would be 1, since we are adding 1 with 0 with 0, and there is no carry. So this is our, our, our answer. And this is correct, correctly 8 in the decimal system. So in the next video, we will make the hardware design using transistors of a block that can behave in this specific way.